Sansa stands on Winterfell's ramparts as the combined Stark and Targaryen forces march towards the castle, and stares in cautious awe as Drogon and Rhaegal fly overhead. She greets Jon as he arrives in the courtyard, and mentions that Arya is, lurking somewhere, when Jon notices her absence. He introduces her to Daenerys as the Lady of Winterfell, and the two women exchange a civil but tense greeting. Later, in the castle's great hall, Sansa sits at the high table along with Jon, Daenerys, and Tyrion. Tyrion tries to calm those present who are displeased at Jon bending the knee to Daenerys. He says that they have assembled the largest army ever seen. Sansa coolly undercuts Tyrion by asking how she is supposed to feed an army that size, as well as two full-grown dragons. When she sarcastically asks what dragons eat, Daenerys replies, whatever they want. Sansa later converses with Tyrion privately for the first time since they last saw each other at Joffrey's wedding. Tyrion calls the wedding, a miserable affair, though Sansa sardonically remarks, it had its moments. She also calls Tyrion out for believing that Cersei will honor the pledge to send the Lannister forces north. She is disappointed in Tyrion, saying she used to think Tyrion was the cleverest man she ever met. Sansa shows Jon the message that Robert Glover will be remaining in Deepwood Mott with his troops, as he never pledged to fight for a Targaryen. She expresses her disapproval of Jon giving up his crown to Daenerys. Jon replies titles don't matter in the face of the Night King and the Army of the Dead and they don't stand a chance against them without Daenerys's help. Although Sansa assures Jon that her faith in his judgment has not wavered, she bluntly asks him if he truly bent the knee to save the North, or because he loves Daenerys. When Jaime arrives at Winterfell, Sansa, now clad in armor, is once again seated at the high table with Jon and Daenerys. The two women harshly berate Jaime for his past actions and question whether his loyalty to their cause is genuine. Only when Brienne vouches for Jaime does Sansa trust him, and Daenerys allows his sword to be returned to him. Later, Daenerys speaks privately with Sansa, addressing some of the thorny political issues involved in their alliance. When Sansa notes Jon's love for Daenerys and is concerned Daenerys is manipulating him, Daenerys openly confesses her love for Jon, assuring Sansa she has no ulterior motives. Although a greater understanding appears to develop between the two women, Sansa remains firm in her conviction that the Northerners will never truly accept an outsider as their ruler again, and bluntly asks Daenerys what her plans for the North are once the dead have been defeated. The awkward moment is interrupted by Maester Walken announcing the arrival of Theon and his men. In the Great Hall, Theon kneels to Daenerys and asks Sansa's permission to stand with the Starks against the Army of the Dead, at which Sansa strides forward and embraces him. The two are later seen having a meal in the courtyard while awaiting the call to arms. When the Army of the Dead and the Army of Winterfell finally face each other across the battlefield, Sansa and Arya observe from the castle walls. When the initial charge of Dothraki screamers is easily repelled and the Whites advance, Arya orders Sansa to go down into the crypts and hands her a dragon glass dagger. Sansa says she doesn't know how to use it, and Arya repeats the words that Jon said when he gave Arya needle. Stick, M with the pointy end. Down in the crypts, Tyrion is restless about not being able to help, but Sansa firmly reminds him that they are all down there for a reason. They won't be any help on the battlefield, and doing nothing is the most heroic, if the most difficult, thing they can do. Impressed by her logic, Tyrion sardonically remarks that they should have stayed married. Sansa humorously acknowledges that he was the best relationship she ever had, but his loyalties to Daenerys would mean that they could never remain together, which is taken as an offense to Daenerys by Missandei. As the army of the dead breaches Winterfell's walls, the Night King reanimates all that have fallen in the battle so far, and his spell extends to the many Stark bodies housed in Winterfell's crypts. In the crypts, the living scramble to escape and Sansa ends up hiding behind a large stone casket with Tyrion. The two look desperately into each other's eyes, and Sansa pulls out the dragon glass dagger given to her by Arya. An unspoken understanding passes between her and Tyrion, who tearfully kisses her hand as if in farewell. Before she can act, however, Arya manages to slay the Night King in the Godswood, causing the entire army and the remaining White Walkers to shatter and collapse. Sansa and the other survivors make their way out of the crypt to survey what remains. The survivors of the battle later gather in front of Winterfell's walls to light the funeral pyres of all who gave their lives in defense of the living. Sansa tearfully places a pin bearing the house Stark direwolf onto Theon's body before lighting his pyre herself. 
During the celebration feast that follows, she makes her way to the table where the hound is seated. The two discuss the many trials they've suffered since their last meeting, and Clegane reminds Sansa that she could have been spared many horrors if she'd left with him when he offered. While not downplaying her own tragedies, Sansa coolly responds that without those horrors, she would still be the little bird Cersei thought her to be, ignorant of the cruelty of the world and unable to fend for herself. Sansa later attends a war council in preparation for the continued war against Cersei. She advises giving the armies time to rest before engaging in a new conflict, only to cause a tense moment with Daenerys who insists on attacking Cersei as soon as possible, coolly telling Sansa that it's time for the North to reciprocate. Along with Arya and Bran, Sansa then meets with Jon in the Godswood. Jon is angry at his sisters for their treatment of Daenerys, explaining they'd all be dead without her. Sansa protests that Arya is the one who killed the Night King and Jon points out Daenerys's armies gave their lives to defend against the army of the dead. Sansa acknowledges this but doesn't think it's reason enough to automatically submit to Daenerys but Jon says he pledged the North to Daenerys. Arya tells Jon she respects his decision, it was the right thing to do, but it's also right for herself and Sansa to distrust his queen. Jon wants them to get to know Daenerys but Arya doesn't want to either, Daenerys isn't one of them. Jon tells her they won't make many allies if they're only friends with the people she grew up with. Arya is fine with this because all she needs is their family, the four of them. Jon tells them he's not a Stark, but Sansa and Arya both insist he is Ned's son and their brother. Pained. Jon reveals he needs to tell them something and swears them to secrecy. Sansa balks but Jon asks her to do it because they're family. When both sisters swear, Jon asks Bran to reveal his true parentage, the son of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen, and the subsequent heir to the Iron Throne. Later, Tyrion finds a shaken Sansa looking at Daenerys's dragons in the sky. She asks why Tyrion would choose to follow Daenerys. Tyrion replies that Daenerys loves Sansa's brother, but Sansa says it doesn't mean she'll be a good queen. Tyrion notes Sansa's dislike of Daenerys but says that a good relationship between the North and the capital has been beneficial. Sansa doesn't think this will be a problem, since Jon is Warden of the North and he loves the Queen. Tyrion realizes something is wrong and asks Sansa to look at him. He urges her to find common ground with Daenerys as Jon won't be spending much time in the North from now on. Sansa wonders what Tyrion is worried about as Daenerys seems to have everything she needs. When Tyrion urges Sansa not to provoke Daenerys, Sansa realizes he's afraid of her. She anxiously tells Tyrion she doesn't want Jon going south. The men in her family never do well there. Tyrion agrees but quips that Jon once told him he's not a Stark. This rattles Sansa, prompting Tyrion to ask if she's alright. He tries to convince her of Daenerys but Sansa is not receptive. As Tyrion leaves, Sansa has a change of heart and goes against her promise to Jon telling Tyrion that there is somebody better for the Iron Throne. Sansa later receives word of the ambush on the Targaryen fleet in which Rhaegal was killed, while Masande is captured. She tells Jaime that she wanted to see his sister executed, but that it will likely not happen due to this setback. Several weeks following the Battle of King's Landing, after which Daenerys lays waste to its surrendered populace and she is assassinated by Jon to stop her destruction, Sansa journeys to King's Landing. She takes command of the northern forces and stations them outside of the city. She does this to ensure the safety of herself and the other lords and ladies inside King's Landing, where she attends a great council in the Dragon Pit to decide the future of Westeros with the rest of the council. While Bran is elected as King of the Andals, the Rhoynar, and the First Men, Sansa holds to her convictions and requests that the North become an independent realm once more, to which Bran agrees. Jon is sentenced to rejoin the Night's Watch, and Arya intends to sail west of the Sunset Sea. After saying her goodbyes to her siblings, Sansa returns to Winterfell and is crowned queen in the north.